Dinosaurs are incredibly famous and impressive creatures, and much time and energy has gone into trying to depict them. But there is an interesting issue in imagining them. If you were to search Ceratosaurus paleo art, you would find a very broad variety of depictions, some brightly coloured and some camouflaged, some thickly muscled and some thin and sinewy. Individual opinion varies and limited information also contributes to this, but many hold the idea that one general depiction is the accurate one, one general look is what Ceratosaurus looked like. But there is a small issue with this and that is that Ceratosaurus is a genus and in most other cases we refer to dinosaurs by their genus, not by their species. Allosaurus, given how famous it is, is a good example to use. This genera has three, potentially four species. Allosaurus fragilis, Allosaurus gemadensis, Allosaurus europaeus, and possibly Allosaurus maximus. This genus was very successful. In some bone beds, they make up 75% of the theropod fossils discovered. There are a number of modern successful genera we could choose from to compare, but we'll choose the genus Panthera, which contains five species, Panthera leo, Panthera pardus, Panthera tigris, Panthera uncia, and Panthera onca. Examining just the skeletons of big cats can reveal some variations in size and structure. However, their skeletons, particularly their skulls, exhibit a remarkable similarity. Lions and tigers especially, despite the similarities in their skeletal structure and size, have very divergent appearances and lifestyles. The perception of Allosaurus's lifestyle and appearance, despite artistic interpretations, tends to be somewhat limited. Yet drawing parallels with the diverse appearances within the genus Panthera, it's plausible to suggest a significant variation in physical characteristics among different Allosaurus species a facet of diversity which often goes underappreciated. The genus Diplodocus is also well known, housing three species, Diplodocus longus, Diplodocus carnegi, and Diplodocus halorum. For comparison, we'll look to the modern genus Conocates. This genus has two species, Conocates taurinus and Conocates gnu. For another comparison, we can look at Rhinoceros. This genus also comprises two species, Rhinoceros unicornis and Rhinoceros sondicus. We can see how different in appearance the species within each genus are from each other. The three species of Diplodocus may have shown even more pronounced differences than the species of wildebeest or rhinoceros. This applies too for Allosaurus. Variations in traits like vibrant hues and integumentary structures such as thick scales, spines and feathers could result in very unique appearances across species within the same genus. Imagine if, 50 million years from now, extraterrestrial fossil hunters arrived on Earth. They might unearth fossils of animals that roam our planet today. In their extraterrestrial classrooms, young learners might excitedly claim that their favourite ancient mammal was the panthera. Such a statement wouldn't make much sense to us. What would they be referring to? A tiger? A leopard? A lion? This scenario mirrors our own when we express fondness for a dinosaur like Allosaurus, which, under a single name, likely encompasses a diversity of forms and lifestyles. The paleo artist who I think best emphasizes this variety is Brian Eng. He stays scientifically accurate with all of his depictions, but is certainly not conservative, and he showcases how much the soft tissue can change and add variety to the species within a genus. This wide range of possibilities does not apply in all cases, as in some, there is an abundance of information. Psittacosaurus is one dinosaur which had been constructed very accurately due to an abundance of information. Also, the process of classifying species and genera is not perfectly consistent among scientists, causing more or less variation within a genus depending on who describes the genera, but it does hint at the possible variety within dinosaur species that we reconstruct. There's a range of artistic interpretations for many dinosaur genera. I think we should remember that several of these reconstructions could be simultaneously correct. Reflecting the diversity that existed within these ancient creatures, leave any thoughts in the comments below and have a good day everyone.